Welcome to Honeybee Yoga Studio. My name is Lindsay, and I create yoga videos aimed at making you feel fantastic. Now, this is video two in my beginner yoga series. If you'd like, you can watch video number one, A, where my microphone doesn't work, and B, where we take a slow and simple stretch. Today, we're going to explore a foundational flow we're going to find our version of down dog and also explore our sun salutation. So we're going to get started right away by coming onto our spines. You'll let your spine come into the earth all the way from the back of your head, nice long arms, and then you have the option of having long legs heavy in the earth but if your low spine isn't too happy about that, you can always bend at your knees, let those feet go nice and wide, and let your knees kind of relax together. Those hands can rest on your belly, on the floor, and if you're comfortable too, we'll allow our eyes to gently close. And we'll always begin and end our yoga practice with a few long, steady, deep breaths in stillness. This time allows us to kind of check out of our day, check out of the outside world, and just allow ourselves to check in to our inner world, feel our breath as it flows, feel our body as it moves. So let's really focus on that breath as it enters through our mouth or nostrils, travels down our throat, expands our chest, expands our belly, and then really enjoy a nice, slow, heavy exhale. If you find your mind is chatty, maybe thinking about your day, your chores, your to-do list, maybe as you exhale, imagine releasing those thoughts. Going at your pace, we'll take a couple more breaths. We'll let our next two breaths be purposefully big, purposefully expansive. So whenever you're ready, inviting an extra deep inhale, expanding our chest and our belly, and then an extra slow and heavy exhale, releasing that breath. We'll do that one more time, taking our biggest breath yet today before our slowest exhale. We'll invite some movement into our bodies by wiggling our fingertips and our toes maybe rotating our ankles, our wrists. And if our legs are nice and long, we'll start to invite a bend into our knees. And together we'll find our knees bent, soles of the feet in the earth, and we'll take a gentle windshield wiper motion. So both knees fall to one side. And then like the windshield wipers on a car, they'll lift and those knees fall to the opposite side. So we'll do a couple wipes back and forth. You can move as slowly or as energetically as feels good, just starting to warm up our low body. And then the next time those knees lift through center, so lifting up to the sky, we'll come to stillness. We're gonna shimmy the heels of our feet to come nice and close to our bum cheekers, to our sit bones. We're gonna make sure our feet are flat on our mat or our practice area, the same distance apart as our hips. Those arms are going to come by our sides, palms into the floor. We're gonna take a nice big inhale for strength and then moving on the exhale when we're ready, those feet press into the floor and we start to peel away our tailbone and our spine. Our hips lift up to the ceiling. That gaze comes just past our belly button and we find ourselves in a nice supported bridge. 
As we take an inhale at the top, we'll continue to lift our hips. And then again, moving on the exhale, we'll start to melt back down towards the ground. Let's do that a few more times and I'll always encourage you to go at your pace. So inhaling through stillness and then exhaling into movement. So as you exhale, those hips lift. Maybe we squeeze our bum cheekers a little, help those hips lift a little bit higher. That chin might tuck just gently, staying lifted on our inhale. And again, moving on the exhale, slowly lowering down. We're gonna aim to do this about four times. So again, going at your pace, and we'll try to keep those knees um, above our heels, so hip distance apart. If you need some extra balance, you can always press into those hands by your side. And then the last time we lift, so the fourth lift, we're going to stay lifted for two breaths. So while we're here, those knees stay hip distance apart. We're taking nice long breaths. Maybe we're engaging those glutes to help encourage those hips to lift. We feel the weight coming into our shoulder blades, behind our shoulders. And then whenever our next exhale approaches, a nice slow lower back down to the ground. Let's hug those knees and thighs into our chest. Give them a nice big squeeze, maybe a rock side to side. And then we're gonna transition up into our tabletop, up to hands and knees. So those feet will come back to the floor. Our knees fall all the way to one side so we can roll onto the side. And then we'll gently lift ourselves up through seated. Let's cross those legs in front of us, roll on top of our knees, and we find ourselves in tabletop. So again, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, and we'll enjoy our cat-cow breath. So with our inhale, our belly button dips, our gaze lifts, our tailbone lifts, our spine is smiling like a big grin. And then as we exhale, our tailbone tucks, our gaze comes to our knees and we press that spine up to the sky like a big frown in our angry cat. So we'll take maybe three or four full rounds of breath. And in your cat and cow, we're really trying to invite space in through our spine and remember our spine travels all the way from our neck behind our shoulder blades our low spine all the way to our tailbone so be as organic and exaggerate this movement as much as feels good for you you can always take organic movement i personally like to bend into my elbows a little bit and maybe send my hips back as i transition between my cat and my cow Let's take one more big breath. Enjoy our final cat, our final cow. And then we'll find ourselves coming to our neutral tabletop. So in our neutral tabletop, our tailbone pulls behind, crown of our head reaches forward. We're going to lift up into our downwards facing dog. So from here, we really want to ensure our hands are about shoulder distance apart. We want to make sure our toes tuck behind us, toes grip into the earth. We can keep our hands and feet exactly as they are. We can always change once we lift. If downwards facing dog isn't for you, if you lift up into it and you're like, eh, not really for me today, come back down onto your hands and knees and just send your heels, or sorry, send your um, bum cheekers back towards your heels and bow your head as I'm doing now. And this is a nice low modified down dog. So we'll all try together to lift up into our down dog so those toes are tucked. Let's lift our knees off of the earth and then send your bum cheekers, send those hips all the way to the back of your mat. 
So we have a nice long line from our hands to our elbows, our shoulders. Our head is tucked between our biceps. Our tailbone is lifted, pulling to the back of the mat. We'll check in with our knees. We can have a generous or gentle bend in our knees. Those heels kind of feel like they want to press down towards our mat, but they don't have to. So in our down dog, we really want to focus on having a long spine. Our weight should feel like it wants to move back towards our feet, even though we have weight coming to our hands. So from here, we're going to walk our dog, which is where we bend deeper into one knee and press the opposite heel towards the floor. So your hips can kind of sway side to side. Get a nice stretch through those hamstrings, maybe through the outsides of your thigh, your calves, maybe your ankles. And really continue to push the floor away with your hands. So it's almost like someone is standing behind you with their hands in the crook of your hips, so kind of pulling on where your hip flexors are, and it's like they're trying to pull you up towards the back of the mat. From here, we'll let our gaze come up towards our hands, and we're just gonna slowly walk those feet up towards our hands. If we have our knees down, we'll simply lift and come into a forward fold. So we've got nice long legs. You can always have a generous or gentle bend in your knees if that feels good. Head, shoulders, arms, hands hang heavy. Your tailbone lifts to the sky while the crown of your head reaches to the floor. Then we're going to lift into our halfway lift. So we're gonna take a nice inhale, lifting our spine until it parallels the earth. You can always bring your hands to your thighs, or your shins. And then we're gonna exhale to fold forward and then slowly come up standing tall. So you might hear a yoga teacher say, lifting one vertebrae at a time. So we're lifting a lot slower than we might normally do in our day-to-day -day life. And as soon as that chin lifts, let's reach both hands up to the sky. Take a nice big inhale and let that exhale bring your hands to your hips. So from here, we're going to go into our sun salutation. So sun salutations are interwoven into our practice. They can get our heart rate up. It's a really good full body movement. You can move as slowly or as quickly as feels okay for you. We're gonna do the first one nice and slow, lots of cueing. Then we'll do it one more time a smidge quicker just to get that kind of flow pace. So our feet are underneath our hips. We're towards the front of our mat. Let's take an inhale and reach our hands tall. And then as we exhale, we're gonna hinge at our hips, forward fold. So those hands come down to the earth. We have a heavy head, shoulders, neck, tailbone lifts. We can hang out here for a little bit. And then when we're ready, we're going to lift into that halfway lift. So hands slide up our legs, spine parallels the earth, nice big inhale. And then as we exhale, we're gonna plant our hands on the earth and we're gonna step back into a tall plank. Now, as you step back into your tall plank, if knees off the floor aren't for you, no worries at all. Let's bring those knees to the ground. So whatever version you choose, knees lifted, knees to the ground. We have our shoulders stacked above our hands. We have the crown of our head reaching forward, heels of our feet reach behind us. Our hips are kind of in line with our shoulders. We don't want to have, you know, our hips a lot taller than our shoulders. And then from here, we're gonna lower onto our bellies. So we're gonna to try to keep those elbows nice and tight towards our body. We're gonna to try to keep our elbows stacked above our hands. So we're kind of shifting our body forward, bending through our elbows and letting that belly come down to the ground. Lengthen those legs behind you. From here, we'll take our choice of a heart opener or a little back bend. 
So we can keep our hands where they are, underneath our shoulders, and we're gonna start to peel our heart away from the earth, lifting up into what's called cobra. Now you don't have to <laughs> lengthen those arms all the way. We're just making space so we can take a nice big inhale. And if long arms aren't for you, place those elbows under your shoulders, forearms on the earth, and take what's called sphinx. So either your sphinx or your cobra. This is our time to take a big inhale, open that heart, lift our chin, shoulders away from our ears. Whenever our exhale comes, we melt back down towards the earth and then we make our way to down dog. To do that, we're gonna tuck our toes behind us going to press through those hands to lift up onto hands and knees onto our tabletop. And now we've been here before, so we know we can stay low if a low down dog is for us. Or to lift into our traditional down dog, we'll lift those knees off of the floor, send those hips to reach to the back of our practice area, and come into our version of down dog. While we're here, let's pedal our feet, Let's swear hips side to side. Take whatever movements feel good for you just to get comfortable and cozy in your down dog. Might look different for everyone. No matter what, if we're low, if we're up high, that tailbone is really reaching to the back of our mat. As we're ready, we'll let our gaze come up to our hands and we'll walk those feet up to our hands. From our forward fold, we'll slide those hands up our legs, taking a nice big inhale into our halfway lift. Spine parallels the earth. And then exhale into that forward fold one more time. And then slowly lift into our standing position, her mountain pose. As that chin lifts, let's reach those hands tall. Oh, and then exhale them to our hips. So we have lots of options as we move through. Coming to your knees, staying nice and low on your forearms. It's whatever works for you. So let's flow through and really think about how your breath is encouraging your movement. So again, feet under hips, shoulders over hips. Let's inhale our hands nice and tall and exhale, deep forward fold. Hang out here for a breath. When that inhale comes, lift up to our halfway lift, spine parallels the earth. And when that exhale comes, we'll plant our hands on the earth, stepping our feet back into our choice of our plank. So again, those knees can be off the earth or down towards the ground. We'll take a big inhale in our plank. And then as we exhale to lower, that weight shifts forward, bending through our elbows, bellies to the earth, choosing our choice of a heart opener, hands or elbows under shoulders, as we lift into cobra or sphinx. Taking a nice big inhale here. Feel that collarbone melt, shoulders melt away from our jaw. And then we exhale, melting back to the earth, tucking those toes behind us, lifting through tabletop. From tabletop, we'll lift those knees or stay nice and low and send our hips to the back of our mat, finding our version of downwards facing dog. We always have that option of walking our dog, taking any movements here that feel good. And then that gaze will come up to our hands. And one final time, we'll walk those feet up to our hands. Enjoy our forward fold, nice heavy upper body. Inhale up into that halfway lift, spine paralleling the earth, tailbone reaches behind, crown of our head reaches forward. And then last time to exhale to fold forward and then slowly come back up to standing tall, mountain pose, chin lifts, let's reach those hands into the sky. 
Oh, and then exhale those hands to our hips. From here, we'll once again check in, make sure those feet are towards the front of our mat. Feet underneath those hips, and we're going to step back into a tall lunge. So we're gonna take that right foot, step it back towards the back of our mat as far as we can go while maintaining our balance. We'll make sure our feet are on railroad tracks, not on a balance beam. That back heel is lifted, pressing into our toes. We've got a long right leg, generous bend in our front left knee, and we're in our high lunge. So both of those hips face forward, shoulders face forward. Let's take a nice big breath here. Sweep those hands up to the sky. Maybe our gaze comes up to the sky. Stay nice and lifted for a breath. Oh, and then let's let those hands come back down to our hips. We're gonna let that back heel fall to the earth. Front left toes point to the right side. So now we have both of our toes pointing to the right side of our practice area. We're going to melt forward into what's called a straddle, so our standing straddle. Let's take those hands to our hips. Nice big inhale, nice long spine. And just like in our forward fold, we wanna keep that tailbone reaching behind us. Crown of our head reaches forward. We're gonna start to hinge at our hips, melting forward, and only go as far as feels good for you. You can bring those hands to your thighs, to your shins, all the way down to the ground. If the earth is too far away, you can always grab some books to stack up, a pillow, you could put a chair in front of you. And we're gonna take two big breaths in our straddle fold. If it feels okay for you, you can always let your chin tuck, your upper body get nice and heavy, kind of stretch out that spine. And then when our next inhale comes, we're gonna to start to lift back nice and tall. You can keep your hands away from your body for a little strength challenge. Feels better, you can bring them to your thighs to help you lift. Now we're gonna face the opposite direction. So your right toes are gonna to face towards the back of your mat. That left foot is gonna step onto its railroad track. Left heel lifts, left toes in the ground, long left leg, and sink into that right knee. So we're in our high lunge on the opposite side. Hips face forward, shoulders face forward. And this kind of straddle transition from side to side is pretty common in yoga videos, yoga classes. A big inhale to sweep our hands tall. Let's stay lifted for a breath or two. Maybe our gaze lifts up to the sky. Hands start to melt back down towards your hips. That left heel falls back to the earth, right toes point to the right, and we'll do that straddle fold one final time. So as you're ready, hands to our hips, nice big inhale, feel that spine get tall, and then exhale to fold forward. Crown of our head moves forward, tailbone moves behind us, and again, hands to a chair, hands to um, books or blocks, hands to your thighs, hands to your shins, hands all the way down to the earth. Just like last time, we'll stay here for about two breaths. And then we'll slowly start to lift ourselves back up. Again, using those hands for support, if you please. We'll point those left toes to the front and step that right foot all the way up to meet its partner. We're gonna make our way back down onto our spines to complete our practice in a little twist. So to make our way back down, we're gonna inhale our hands, <clears throat> excuse me, inhale our hands tall. Exhale, forward fold. So let those hands come down to the earth. 
get nice and heavy. We'll take a nice big inhale to lift back up into our halfway lift. Spine parallels the earth. And then we'll exhale, hands to press into the earth, stepping those feet back into our tall plank. And let's let those knees come all the way down to the ground. We're going to let our feet pivot to one side, walking our hands back to our knees. Let those bum cheekers come to the ground, lengthen our legs in front. And let's slowly lower ourselves back onto our spines. So you can keep your knees nice and bent. You can use your hands behind you for support. Sometimes you can reach your hands forward if you're looking for a little challenge for that core and slowly lower yourself back down. And then let's hug those knees into our chest. Give them a nice big squeeze. Keeping those knees above our belly, above our chest. We're gonna let our arms open out wide beside us like a big T. Then we're going to let both of our knees get heavy to the left side. So our knees move to the left side. That right hip maybe stacks above our left hip. You can let your feet come to the earth if that feels better. You can kind of stagger your knees. All that matters is our low body is really shifting to the left side in our supine twist. You can take that left hand and kind of hold on to that right leg if that helps keep it in place. And if you'd like to deepen the stretch, we'll bring our gaze to come over our right elbow or hand or shoulder, whatever is to the right side. We're gonna hang out here for a few breaths. And as our practice winds down, maybe as our muscles begin to relax and settle, you just kind of think about how your body feels. Think about how that sun salutation felt. How do those shoulders feel? How's your spine feeling? that left hand is holding on to your right leg we'll release it we'll bring our gaze back through center looking up to the ceiling and then nice and slow we're going to bring both of those knees all the way to the right side so kind of like we're opening a book we'll let that right knee lead left knee follows and again you can have your knees stack you can have them splay you can have your feet more into the earth you can cross your feet so whatever feels okay for you. And again, option this time to take that right hand and hug on to that left knee. And option to bring that gaze out our left shoulder. Just like the opposite side, we'll hang out for a couple of breaths, enjoy some stillness. Stillness is often um, what we kind of look for achieving in our practice where we get nice and still and quiet and enjoy the posture. But I just want to flag that stillness should never come at a compromise to our comfort. So if you get into this nice little twist and you're like, yeah, this feels great. And then all of a sudden it starts to not feel great. You don't have to stay there. Shimmy, move, adjust, do what you have to do to feel comfortable. It's your practice. Do what feels best to make you feel fantastic. Let's release that right hand. Bring our gaze back up to the ceiling. Bring those knees back up into our belly, into our chest. Give them a nice big hug. And then we'll finish our little flow the same way that we started in our version of Savasana. So we can let those feet come to the floor, let our knees knock together. Maybe we can have nice long legs. And we'll let those hands come to our sides. Again, if you feel comfortable too, let those eyelids get heavy. And we'll just enjoy our breath. Enjoy the stillness. Maybe with each exhale, you feel your body get a little bit heavier, feel the support of the earth beneath you.
follow that breath as it flows in through your mouth or nostrils, down your throat, into your chest, deep into your belly. Maybe hold on to that breath for just a pause before you feel all of those opposite sensations on the exhale. Once again, we'll enjoy two purposely big, purposely expansive breaths. At your pace when you're ready, making that next inhale extra deep. Feel that belly button lift and rise before letting that breath go. And one more time, the deepest inhale you've taken today. Fill up all those nooks and crannies. And then let that breath escape. We'll bring a bend into our knees, letting those soles of the feet come back into the earth. We'll enjoy a nice little windshield wiper. Knees falling side to side. Then the next time those knees fall to your favorite side, we'll tuck into a little ball on that side. Maybe taking one last moment just to think about how that little flow felt. And then we'll use that upper hand to lift ourselves up. We'll come into a seated posture to close our practice. We'll take two big breaths to close our time together. Option to use those hands. Bring our hands by our side. A big inhale to sweep them wide and tall up to the sky and an exhale wide and heavy back to the earth. One more time, inhale wide and tall. Maybe that gaze lifts as our hands meet and then exhale those hands all the way to our heart where we take a little bow for our practice, a bow for our time together. Well, I hope you enjoyed video number two in the beginner series. Um, a lot of these movements are movements that are very common and regular in a yoga practice. So I hope you can see that they're very accessible. They can be a lot of fun. Um, and you can also accommodate for whatever feels good for you. So like in our plank, bringing our knees down. In our down dog, bringing our knees down. In our cobra, bringing those elbows down. Just doing whatever feels good for you as you build your practice. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you're enjoying most about building your yoga practice. If you aren't already a subscriber, I would love to have you subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.